Man, I feel so bad for Green Lantern fans right now. You guys are probably just swirling with mixed emotions uh, with this latest announcement that you're getting a Green Lantern movie. Oh boy, he's back. Uh, but David Goyer is heading it up. I think that this, this announcement is just a perfect example of what's going on with the DCEU right now. It's 50% amazing and right on the money, but it's 50% what are you thinking cringeworthy, right? But there's the 50 other, that good 50% is so good that you're like, I, I have to see it. And that 50% is largely, well, I, Jeff Johns, he messed up with the first Green Lantern movie. Uh, some people like to say, oh, well, he wasn't very heavily involved there. Maybe that was the case. So, you know, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt because he's Mr. Green Lantern over at uh, DC Comics. He's written it for, for years and he's behind one of the greatest crossovers in DC history, in my opinion, Blackest Night, uh, and then followed by Brightest Day. It wasn't as good as Blackest Night, but it was good. And that was like the only time I've ever read Green Lantern comics. So they were really, really good. And he's going to be executive producing along with John Berg, the two guys who are, you know, we've been told are now heading up the DCEU. So uh, David Goyer, though, is the point man here. And it's going to be, uh, it's, it's, been, it's been pitched as lethal weapon in space because comedy worked so well the first time around. Uh, and it's gonna star Hal Jordan, but also Jon Stewart. So they're giving, you know, I think that the Green Lantern fandom, it's become pretty clear now, is split down the middle with 50%, there are a lot of 50%s in this video, but I think about half really are in favor of Hal Jordan, like old school Green Lantern fans, and then half who really know the character from uh, the Justice League animated series are all about Jon Stewart. So it would be great if you could get multiple demographics to like your movie, that's always a win for Hollywood. Now, uh, the, the place that I started out with my notes, actually my initial reaction, of course, was who would be Jon Stewart? And I'm gonna do a separate casting video because this is a tough one. I really gotta think about it, make sure I have some good, I wanted to get this video up right away so I didn't wanna rush my casting suggestions. But I will tell you that if Nate Parker had navigated his situation uh, a little bit better, well actually well at all, I think he really messed up there. You know, when Oprah Winfrey offers to help squash your controversy, you say yes, right? And he said no, so he really has no one to blame but himself there. But if he had handled that situation a little bit better, I think he would have been the first, the number one draft pick to play Jon Stewart, so it's, 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 it's unfortunate. But, and then my next note was, who on earth though would want to work with David Goyer, right? I mean, the guy has a pretty bad reputation at this point, uh, although, I think that sort of, I don't know, I, I, I love the DC movies, or I like what, I like their potential, I like, oh, it's again, it's exactly what I'm saying. I'm, a, I'm swirling full of mixed emotions at this moment, but I think that a lot of actors would be, I think, a little bit nervous at this point of getting involved, right? You're going to have to get somebody who's like new, right? Or whose career needs a boost, and it's like, I'm not going to turn down that a, a DC or any big franchise movie for that, for that matter. Um, so I will work with David Goyer, and you know, David Goyer's had his moments. As I've said before, David Goyer is a great idea man. I think that his ideas are fantastic, but when it comes to execution, I think he's quite poor. Also, he hasn't had this much control over something in a long time. And the last time he did, or one of the last times he did, he killed the Blade franchise. He had been a writer on the films, uh, was uh, up to director for Blade 3, and he got into such a horrible fight with Wesley Snipes during production that Wesley Snipes actually tried to strangle him on set. That's really a bad situation. Uh, it very rarely comes to a physical confrontation in Hollywood. So that's amazing. But, you know, I have to say, David Goyer is still working, and unfortunately, Wesley Snipes is not. Uh, so I think this kind of goes along with Warner Brothers' crazy mafia loyalty that they have over there. Like, for instance, that they will not fire Snyder. That they're like, David Ayer, we believe in you. Go make Gotham City Sirens, you know, even though many people said that you were the problem with Suicide Squad. You stay with it, buddy. We're, you know, and in the same same kind of creative control. We're not even going to put any limitations on you. And you're like, not one? Uh, and so just like they continue to work with Snyder without any, you know, without it putting any limitations on him that we know of, uh, they're just, they continue to have Goyer in their Rolodex, which I find quite mind boggling. He's going to be helped on the script by Justin Rhodes, uh, who has very poor credits. He must have some amazing spec scripts that we don't know about. 
or he doesn't. Maybe he's just friends with David Goyer. Sometimes that's the way it works. Uh, and Goyer will not only script, but he'll produce. And since there is no director, I wouldn't be surprised if he was angling to direct. I mean, hey, David Ayer got to direct. Uh, so I, I think David Goyer and David Ayer to me have kind of a similar vibe at this point. So I wouldn't be surprised if Goyer actually ended up being uh, you know, chosen as the director. Uh, and who, if he's not, whatever director they do choose, I feel sorry for that individual because David Goyer is both the writer and the producer. The director is going to be stuck right there in the middle and they're going to have to basically do what David Goyer wants anyway. All right, so my favorite thing again is that Jon Stewart's going to be in the movie. And so I think that this is finally going to give a lot of fans what they want. If they get the casting right, it could be huge. But I don't know how I feel about two Green Lanterns front and center. There are two Green Lanterns on the Justice League right now. There's Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz. Not particularly well defined either. So that's maybe part of the problem. But now it's just kind of like a green blur or a green light in the back of the Justice League comics. Neither, you know, you just have kind of like Green Lanterns. You don't really have a character. And so I don't know how I feel about two. Uh, like who, which one will get the call to the Justice League, right? Are they, they both going to get called up? You're going to hurt 50% of your fan base when the other one doesn't get the call. So that could be tough. Maybe the Green Lan maybe they'll just stick to the Green Lantern Corps and the Justice League can team up with the entire Corps. But since this is called Green Lantern Corps, expect tons of cameos, but there were lots of cameos in the first one too. Uh, so we'll see what characters they go with. I, I wonder if they'll bring in, you know, the different uh, spectrums of light. That's I, I think that's always very interesting, but perhaps too much for a, a first movie. Now, my guess would be that Hal Jordan is the experienced one, and he's training Jon Stewart, who's the rookie being brought into the core. Uh, you know, because they've already had the Hal Jordan origin story, so you know, they don't have to do a redux of that. Let Jon Stewart have the origin story. He comes from a military background. I think that's great. This is a you know, great uh, idea to have a, a, a movie focusing on you know, the troops. Uh, and then he, so he gets drafted into the Green Lantern Corps. And you know, Hal Jordan currently in the comics is training, speaking of Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz, he's training them in the comics right now. And Jeff Johns, of course, is behind that as well. So again, I'm gonna think about the casting, come back to you on that tomorrow. Uh, but no way, by the way, that Ryan Reynolds is coming back. It's just not going to happen. He was rejected as Green Lantern, and he's Deadpool. He's busy. Uh, but I'm curious, do you want Ryan Reynolds to come back? I can't imagine that any of you do. So write your thought. And also, fun fact, Ryan Reynolds, of course, was in Blade Trinity. <laughs> he was actually very funny in that movie. So it would be full circle for him. So what do you think? Uh, or how do you feel with your mixed emotions? What's winning out right now, right? Uh, I think it's the usual DCEU fan mix of excitement and absolute terror of how it might actually turn out, all right? And hope, but hope that it will somehow work. All right, write your thoughts down below. If you have any casting suggestions for me, put them out there and I'll pick some of the best ones uh, in a special fan casting section in the video tomorrow. All right, thanks for watching and you can check out some more videos right now. Thanks.